uh, hearing. Um, thank you everybody for coming out this evening. Uh, let me start by saying that we do have English to Spanish simultaneous interpretation services available for audience members and it's provided through headsets. There is a table uh, in the back of the room, I was told. There, oh, it's right over there on that side. Um, so that uh, if you need uh, interpretation services, is right there. Uh, tenemos interpretación del inglés al español disponible para la audiencia por medio de dispositivos auriculares. Están en la mesa al final, ahí, al medio del cuarto. We have 10 speakers delivering their testimony in Spanish. So after they read it, our staff will translate for the rest of the audience. And council members should have an English version in front of them. Also, um, just a reminder that this hearing is being recorded. It will be up on our website tomorrow. For the live streaming, turn to the council's Facebook page, Montgomery County, Maryland Council. I do want to um, also just acknowledge very quickly and um, really um, thank my colleagues and Council Member Albornoz in particular who um, really had a really great suggestion. We were trying to figure out how to bring uh, this particular hearing to the community and a lot of work went into identifying the site and making it happen to so thank you for our central staff as well um, for all their work to get this happening. So this is like an experiment and we'll keep doing these kinds of things. Um, moving forward. So this is a public hearing for the council to receive testimony on the Veers Mill Corridor Master Plan, which builds on the 1989 Master Plan for the, for the communities of Kensington, Wheaton, the 1994 Aspen Hill Master Plan, and the 1992 North Bethesda Garrett Park Master Plan as amended. It also amends the general plan on wedges and corridors for the physical development of the Maryland-Washington Regional District in Montgomery and Prince George's counties as amended. The 2013 Countywide Transit Corridors Functional Master Plan, the Master Plan of Highways and Transitways as amended as well as the Bicycle Master Plan. The plan extends four linear miles between the city of Rockville and the 2012 Wheaton Central Business District and vicinity sector plan boundary and focuses on improved connectivity between transit and community uses, enhanced safety for all users of Veers Mill Road, and strategic redevelopment opportunities to strengthen existing neighborhoods. The plan makes recommendations for land use, zoning, transportation, parks, trails, and open space, the environment, and community facilities. A Fed Committee work session is tentatively scheduled for Monday, February 25th. Persons wishing to submit additional material for the council's consideration should do so before the close of business, February 8th. For everyone scheduled to testify today, please bring copies of your written testimony to the clerk at this time, and the clerk is on that side. She's raising her hand right there. Um, and I uh, do want to acknowledge that uh, we do have um, planning board member, Natalie Fanny Gonzalez, who I know also has done a lot of outreach on this plan. Um, and uh, also want to acknowledge that although there probably will be some, you know, questions and thoughts that we might have, this is our opportunity to hear from you and we do have a long list. So if we don't have questions, don't think that it's not because we're not interested in what you're saying, it's because we want to be respectful of your time, um, but there will obviously be a lot of opportunities during the Fed work session, et cetera, to um, dig much deeper into this. I. I, oh, and I'm sorry, FED is the Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee. Um, and just yesterday, we also hopped on a bus and did a tour of the entire uh, master plan um, area, and that was very useful as well. Uh, so we're going to get started with our Group A, and uh, that would be Greg Osant, Casey Anderson, Arthur Clemmer, Rebecca Bonilla, Sonia Climaco, and Glenda Baquedano. Good evening, Greg Austin. Greg Austin testifying on behalf of County Executive Elrich. The executive is pleased to see that the Beers Mill Corridor Master Plan recognizes the diversity of the master plan area with its majority minority demographic and varying range of income levels. He also applauds the plan's strong support of BRT. The executive wants to focus on two major elements of the plan. One is the importance of pedestrian cycling and auto safety along the corridor. The other is maintaining affordable housing opportunities for the hundreds of residents below 60% AMI. 
He has two major concerns. One is the significant cost of public safety projects recommended in the plan. The other is the likely displacement of current residents at a net loss of affordable housing for a population already burdened by rental housing costs. The 15 pedestrian incidents since 2015 that have seriously injured nine people and resulted in six fatalities is simply unacceptable. The executive wants to take steps to address this terrific situation. Given the county's fiscal constraints, the executive asks that you separately identify and prioritize short-term safety, impro safety improvements so that we can begin to budget the most critically needed near-term solutions. The executive has also made clear that fundamental to any successful strategy to increase affordable housing is preservation of market rate affordable. He has tasked DHCA with developing innovative options for creating and maintaining housing affordability and family-sized apartments without assuming that older gar garden-style apartments that are naturally, naturally occurring affordable housing must be torn down and redeveloped. That is why he's concerned about the plan's recommendation to rezone the four multifamily properties in the Twinbrook District. These currently provide almost 1,000 rental units, including many two and three bedroom apartments with rents that range from a low of 746 for a studio to a high of 1985 for a four bedroom unit. And according to data provided by County Stat, which we provided, about 45% of the residents in the area are below the 200% of the federal government's poverty level, which is 51,500 for a family of four. And about half the residents are rent burdened. Viewed through a racial equity lens, this plan threatens to reduce the availability of affordable housing in an area where approximately 80% of the population is non-white. These concerns have raised, raised questions for the executive. If you rezone these properties, how many units will, be, will, will the redeveloped sites provide? What is the net loss of number of units and how is that population served? How many residents will be displaced, will be displaced and never come back? And for the Twinbrook District, the plan calls for 15% MPDU, 5% market rate affordable units, which disappear after 20 years and a minimum of 17 and a half, two and three bedroom units. There is not enough information to really understand what the results will be, although it most certainly will mean few uh, truly affordable units for families. Concerning the missing middle uh, uh, market must not override the need for maintaining it and expanding housing for the working poor. The plan is currently presented threatens to reduce the existing stock of available family-sized apartments. Not only is there no requirement to replace the existing two, three, and four bedroom units, there is no requirement to expand beyond what exists now. In other words, the plan threatens to increase the affordable housing crisis. The executive urges you to address the you. growing affordability cap by preserving the Thank existing you. unit mix and rents, increasing the supply for the most vulnerable Hello. rental Hello. housing market. Thank you. We're going to practice uh, with the timing, uh, so maybe I'll keep Councilmember um, Katz is going to be the official timekeeper today. That's an excellent role. Mr. Casey Anderson. Hello, I'm, I'm Casey Anderson, uh, Chair of the Montgomery County Planning Board. I'm here uh, representing uh, Natalie and the other uh, Planning Board members. Thank you for coming, Natalie. Um, I'll be brief because you heard our uh, summary the other day. I just wanted to point out that this uh, county had seven major pedestrian uh, collisions just in the last 48 hours. I think we're four and two hours yesterday on uh, Connecticut Avenue. Uh, I think that speaks to what we all know is a growing uh, problem with uh, pedestrian safety. So many of them are on corridors like Veers Mill and the Upper George Avenue corridor, Middle Brick Road and 118 in Germantown is another example and we'll bring you a plan shortly that addresses some of those issues in uh, that part of the county. But uh, this is uh, really a landmark plan and we hope to set a precedent for uh, addressing some of these pedestrian safety issues in our land use planning. Uh, as to affordable housing, we look forward to discussing with you and with the county executive's representatives how we can make sure that we ensure, uh, preserve market rate affordable housing while increasing the housing supply, which is ultimately the only way that we can address the need for uh, housing affordability in the context of long-term uh, job growth and population growth uh, in the county. So I'll uh, leave it th at that and look forward to hearing uh, from members of the community. Thank you very much. Arthur Clemmer. Rebecca Onilla. Muy buenas noches. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Rebecca Onilla. He participado en el proyecto cívico latino liderado por las oficinas de la concejal Nancy Navarro. He recibido las clases cívicas antes Quiero agradecer la oportunidad que me han brindado para venir a testificar y apoyar los esfuerzos 
de los miembros del consejo. Soy madre de cuatro hijos, de cuatro niños, y estu que estudian en las, en las escuelas públicas del condado. Vivo muy cerca de la Beresmil Road por más de 20 años. Estoy muy feliz de, de ir viendo los cambios que han recibido en nuestro sector, siempre para beneficio de todos los que, recibi los que residimos. Aunque yo conduzco siempre, salgo a caminar con mis hijos pequeños, pero lo he dejado de hacer. Porque es muy inseguro para nosotros debido a que en algunas calles en nuestro vecindario no hay aceras para peatones y es muy peligroso hacerlo, tan cerca cuando pasan los vehículos. Quisiera que se pongan en práctica acciones para eliminar el índice de muertes por accidente de, de tránsito y mejorar la, seguri la seguridad peatonal. Hemos visto últimamente en las noticias tantos accidentes, muchas veces falta entre, entre carros y peatones. También me gustaría que en los centros comerciales sobre la Veres Mil se señalizaran mejor los parqueos y que también se incremente el número de áreas de estacionamiento para personas con necesidades especiales, incluyendo a madres embarazadas o con hijos. En el Mall de Witton hay parqueos designados para la, las personas con discapacidades y para madres embarazadas con familia. Nuevamente quiero agradecerles por la oportunidad de expresarme mis inquietudes. Muchas gracias. Buenas gracias. noches. I'm going to read the testimony in English now. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Bonilla. I have participated in the Latino Civic Project led by Council President Navarro's office and received the civic curriculum. I'd first like to thank you for the opportunity that you've provided me to come and testify and support the efforts of the council members. I am the mother of four students who study in the county's public schools. I have lived very close to Veers Mill Road for more than 20 years. I'm very happy to see the changes that have been underway in our area, always for the benefit of all of us who reside there. Although I drive, I often go out to walk with my small children. However, I have stopped doing it because it's unsafe for us, thanks to the fact that on certain streets in our neighborhoods, there are no sidewalks for pedestrians, and it's dangerous to walk so close to passing cars. I would like for actions to be taken to eliminate the rate of deaths by transport-related accidents and to improve pedestrian safety. Recently, we have seen so many accidents involving cars and pedestrians, often fatal, in the news. I would also like to see better signage and more disabled parking spots in the shopping centers around Beers Mill, including for pregnant women and mothers with families. Thank you once again for allowing me to express my concerns. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Sonia Climaco. Buenas noches. Si agarras el micrófono y lo puedes bajar, ajá. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Sonia Clímaco. He participado en el, proyecto, en el proyecto cívico latino liderado por la oficina de la concejal Navarro. Y he recibido las clases cívicas. He vivido en, en la 1216 de la Beresmil Road por más de cinco años. Soy madre de una niña que estudia en la escuela de la Beresmil y estoy testificando a favor de este plan. El plan maestro es, muy, mucho, es de mucho beneficio para nuestra comunidad, especialmente para los que residimos en esta área. Considerado que en este corredor todos saldremos beneficiados, especialmente los que hacemos uso de esta calle. Una de mis preocupaciones es durante estos años he observado que las paradas de los autobuses están muy distantes entre cada una y en algunos casos no existe protección para los usuarios, faltando pequeñas casetas para estar protegido de la lluvia o nieve. Un ejemplo es la parada de la Veres Mill Road y la Randall Road. Me gustaría que se incluyera en este proyecto construir más casetas, instalar en televisores para que informe el recorrido de los autobuses. He conservado es conserva, conversado con algunos padres de las escuelas que usan transporte público y ellos quisieran 
que pasaran los buses con pequeños intervalos de tiempo. Por eso me parece fantástico que haya el servicio de buses rápido. Quiero agradecer a los concejales por su gestión en servicio y revitalización de este sector en beneficio de nuestros residentes. Muchas gracias. My name is Sonia Climaco. I have participated in the Latino Civic Project led by Council President Navarro's office and received the civic curriculum. I have lived on Veers Mill Road for more than five years. I'm the mother of a student at Veers Mill Elementary School, and I'm here to testify in favor of this plan. The master plan greatly benefits our community, especially those of us who reside here. I'm confident that all of us stand to gain from this corridor, especially those of us who use this road. One of my concerns is that in recent years, I have observed that bus stops are far from each other. And in a few cases, there is no protection for users apart from small bus stands to protect against rain or snow. An example of this is the stop at Veers Mill and Randolph Road. I would like for the construction of more bus stands, as well as television screens that inform users of the bus routes to be included in this project. I have spoken with other parents at my child's school who use public transport, and they would like for the buses to come by more frequently. For that reason, the addition of rapid transit buses seems like a fantastic idea to me. I would like to thank the council members for their development of new services and revitalization in this sector to the benefit of us, the residents. Thank you for your time. Thank you, muchas gracias. Glenda Baquedano. Muy buenas noches, mi nombre es Glenda Baquedano. He participado con el proyecto Cívico Latino liderado por la oficina de la concejal Nancy Navarro. Esta está de, está de, de decente de la Versmil Road por la más de cinco años. Estoy a favor de las recomendaciones del plan y en particular agradezco su interés por mejorar las condiciones y necesidades de transporte de residentes de esta área. El desarrollo de este plan, maestro, sin duda nos dará una movilización más eficiente y segura. Desde hace aproximadamente cuatro años he podido observar que el tramo entre la intersección de Newport Mill Row y Bears Mill Row hasta la luz ubicada en la Clearing Row se necesitan mejores, señalizaci mejores señalizaciones sobre los límites de velocidad y la preocupación de pasos peatonales de ser posible cámaras y impongan las debidas secciones a los conductores agresivos, ya que las señales existentes muchas veces son ignoradas. Hay el menor tres escuelas y una de las iglesias con mucha gente en los alrededores, lo que implica movilizaciones de familiares completas que se ven afectadas en la actualidad. Es importante también evaluar la distancia, las paradas de autobuses, así como la construcción de casetas de espera debidamente equipadas que incluya los horarios del servicio de transporte, sea por bandas electrónicas o televisores. Estoy muy feliz de ser parte de la comunidad de residentes del condado de Montgomery y de todos los cambios que se realizan para beneficios de nuestros los residentes. Quiero agradecerles al Consejo del Condado de Montgomery por la oportunidad de expresar mis inquietudes frente a ustedes. Gracias. Buenas noches. Muchas gracias. Good evening. My name is Glenda Baquedano. I have participated in the Latino Civic Project led by Council President Navarro's office and received the civic curriculum. I have lived in the Connecticut Avenue Estates community adjacent to Veers Mill Road for more than five years. 
I'm in favor of the recommendation of this plan, and in particular, I appreciate its aim of improving the conditions and availability of transport for residents in this area. This master plan's development will doubtless provide us with more efficient and secure mobility. For the past four years approximately, I have been able to observe that in the stretch between the intersection of Newport Mill Road and Veers Mill Road, until the light located at Claridge Road, there is a need for more signage related to speed limits and caution at pedestrian walkways, and if possible for cameras that can impose the appropriate penalties on aggressive drivers, since the currently used signs are often ignored. There are at least three schools and one of the more frequented churches in the area, which means the mobility and safety of entire families is affected by the current status quo. It is also important to evaluate the distances between bus stops, as well as the construction of properly equipped bus stands, including the schedule of bus service, whether by electronic strips or television screens. I'm very happy to be part of the community of Montgomery County residents and happy about all the changes that are being made to benefit the residents. I would like to thank the Montgomery County Council for the opportunity to express my concerns before you. Thank you so much, muchísimas gracias. Um, did you have a comment, Council Member um, Reamer, who is the Chair of the Planning, Housing, and Economic Development, wants to make a comment. Thank you, Council President Nancy Navarro. Just wanted to express appreciation for everyone's participation tonight and briefly to comment on the testimony from the County Executive. I uh, really appreciate his concern for the significant affordable communities, the uh, multifamily buildings that are there today. I know a, member, member, a number of council members have expressed concerns about that, and I share those concerns as well. So we're going to take a real close look at that recommendation at the committee and, and come up with a better approach. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Group B, Eunice Morales, Martina Redding, Fanny Bernabe, Juan Gomez, Juan González Cárdenas y María Ruiz. Eunice Morales. Gracias, buenas noches. Uh, mi nombre es Eunice Morales. He participado en, también en el proyecto cívico latino liderado por la oficina de la concejal Nancy Navarro. Y recibido las clases cívicas también. Vivo en el vecindario por alrededor de más de 10 años y vengo a dar mi testimonio a favor del plan maestro del corredor de Bersmere, ya que considero que dará mucho beneficio a nuestras familias. Mis hijos estudian en la escuela de la Sargent Shriver y allí he conocido también a muchas madres que caminan con sus hijos desde Parland Drive y otras calles cercanas. Enfrentando la dificultad de caminar, entramos sin aceras. Esto les obliga a ellas a hacerlo sobre el asfalto del vehicular. Como sabrán, El tráfico vehicular en esta calle es bastante pesado y los vehículos pasan con alta velocidad, sobre todo en la pendiente bajando la Parland Drive. Y aunque las, hay señalización, parece que los conductores no reducen la velocidad. Un servicio de transporte y de conectividad eficiente que tome en consideración los beneficios de los usuarios, en principal de los peatones, brindará mayor seguridad y confianza al momento de movilizarse, incluso con las carriolas de los niños pequeños. Considero también que es un buen momento para evaluar cosas tan básicas para mejorar la, la seguridad como la iluminación de las calles y paradas de autobuses, e incluir información necesaria en cada parada de bus sobre las rutas y los tiempos de espera. Muchas gracias por permitirme expresar estas necesidades. Buenas noches. My name is Eunice Morales. I have participated in the Latino Civic Project led by Council President Navarro's office and received the civic curriculum. I have lived for more than 10 years in the neighborhood adjacent to Veers Mill and Randolph Road. I have come to give testimony in favor of the Veers Mill Corridor Master Plan as I believe it will provide many benefits to our families. My children study at Sergeant Shriver Elementary School, and there I have met many mothers who walk with their children from Parkland Drive and other nearby streets. And although there is signage, it seems that drivers don't reduce their speeds. An efficient transport service and connectivity that takes into consideration the benefits, in particular to pedestrians who use the sidewalks, will provide better security and confidence when walking. That includes strollers for younger children. 
I also believe that it is the right moment to evaluate things as simple for the improvement of safety as the lighting of streets and bus stops and the inclusion of the necessary information at every bus stop about the routes and waiting times. Thank you for allowing me to express these concerns. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Martina Redding. Muy buenas noches. Mi nombre es Martina Redding. He participado en el proyecto cívico latino liderado por la oficina de la concejal Navarro. Y he recibido clases cívicas. Vivo en esta área de Berry Mills por más de seis años y durante mucho tiempo trabajé en dos lugares en esa área, es que están ubicados en el centro comercial, que está en el cruce de Berry Mill Road y la Randall Road. En ese entonces me di cuenta que muchos clientes se quejaban sobre los parqueos. Esto significa también que la demanda es mucha y somos muchos los que vivimos en esta área. Considero que las áreas de los parqueos se deben de revisar porque actualmente lucen muy mal diseñados y totalmente desnivelados. Esto, estoy contenta de que se realicen estos cambios, en especial en el área que está ubicado, el centro comercial, ya que los edificios son muy viejos y, lucen, y no lucen atractivos. Con la construcción de las recomendaciones de este plan, se verá una imagen muy bonita de estos centros comerciales y más accesible con un transporte rápido y eficiente. Apoyo totalmente la renovación de esta área, ya que la construcción será de mucho beneficio para todos. Muchas gracias, buenas noches. My name is Martina Redding, and I have also participated in the Latino Civic Project, led by Council President Navarro's office, and received the civic curriculum. I have lived in the Veers Mill area for more than six years, and for a long time I worked in two places of business located in the shopping center at the intersection of Veers Mill Road and Randolph Road. During that time, I realized that many clients complained about the parking lots. This means that the demand is high due to the high number of people who live in the area. I believe that the parking lot areas should be reviewed because at the moment they appear badly designed and totally uneven. I am happy that these changes are being made in these areas located in the shopping center now now that the buildings have become old and unattractive. With the construction of the recommendations of this plan, these shopping centers will have a more attractive image and be more efficient and accessible to rapid transit. I totally support the renovation of this area, given that this construction will be very beneficial to all residents. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, muchas gracias. Fanny Bernabe. <coughs> Muy buenas noches. Quiero agradecer la oportunidad que se me ha dado de venir a testificar esta noche. Mi nombre es Fanny Bernabé. He participado en el proyecto cívico latino liderado por la oficina de la concejal Nancy Navarro y recibiendo las clases cívicas. Soy madre de tres hijos de, en edades escolares. Vivo en el área de Beers Mill y Conérico Avenue. La implementación de este plan traerá mejor seguridad vehicular de bicicletas y en especial peatonal lo que será de mucho beneficio, ya que estas calles son muy transitadas y es muy importante que se desplieguen proyectos que tomen en cuenta peatones y bicicletas. En estos últimos años hemos visto muchos accidentes fatales, ocasionados por conductores agresivos, los cuales no tienen precaución al conducir con los peatones. Es importante que en esta calle se construyan áreas para peatones y carriles solamente para el uso de bicicletas. He observado que personas que caminan o usan bicicleta están arriesgando su vida al cruzar por las avenidas principales o lo hacen en medio de las carreteras, sobre todo cuando hay exceso de acumulación de nieve y no hay áreas seguras para caminar. Quisiera que se considere tener el uso de bicicletas para ir a las estaciones de metro más cercanas al corredor. Quisiera también se considere instalar cámaras de reducción de velocidad, semáforos y más seguridad para los peatones y así evitar accidentes fatales. De antemano agradezco su consideración. Gracias. Good evening. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to come and testify tonight. My name is Fanny Bernabe. I have participated in the Latino Civic Project led by Council President Navarro's office and received the civic curriculum. 
I'm the mother of three school-aged children, and I live in the area of Veers Mill Road and Connecticut Avenue. The implementation of this plan will bring better safety conditions for vehicles, bicycles, and especially pedestrians, all of which would be extremely beneficial given that these streets, <coughs> excuse me, given that these streets are heavily transited. It is very important that projects be undertaken that take pedestrians and bicyclists into account. In the past years, we have seen many fatal accidents caused by aggressive drivers who display no caution or concern in driving near pedestrians. It is important that sidewalks and exclusive bicycle paths be constructed along this street. I have observed that people who walk or use bicycles are risking their lives when they cross by the designated walkways or in the middle of the street, which happens above all when there is an accumulation of snow and fewer safe walking areas. I would like there to be consideration for the use of bicycles to get to the metro stations closest to the corridor. I would also like there to be consideration about installing cameras to reduce driver's speed, traffic lights, and more security for pedestrians. That way we can avoid fatal accidents. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Muchísimas gracias. Juan Gómez. Sí, buenas noches. Buenas noches. Antes de todo, quiero agradecerle por por haberme invitado. Yo tengo tres años viviendo en la zona, estoy muy contento en mi zona y lo que sí tengo un pequeño de preocupación es que hace dos años uh, nos invitaron a una reunión del consulado y nos dijeron um, que nuestras casas las iban a deshacer y que iban a hacer unos edificios. Y disculpe mi atrevimiento, quiero saber cómo está ese proceso. ¿Quién invitó a esa reunión? Los invitaron de parte del condado, he, he, de la zona. I just want to translate for sure. everyone else. Um, uh, what he said is that um, he lives here. He's been living in the Beers Mill Road for the past three years. Three years, yeah. Three years. And um, recently, a year ago, he was invited to a meeting in which um, they were told that their houses were to be sold. Yeah, they, destroy they, they would have the to house. sell their houses. Yes. And uh, there has been no other update since then, so now they are worried. Right, he asked the question, he wanted to know the status of that, and I asked who, who yeah, invited yeah. you to this meeting, Sorry. and you said the county, el yes, condado, yes. el del condado. condado sí. Me okay. gustaría saber uh, cómo está ese proceso, si se va a llevar a cabo o no, porque no nos han dicho nada más. I Lo que like podemos hacer es que eh, vamos a tomar su información de contacto para investigar quién fue que lo invitó, porque nosotros no tenemos ninguna información sobre ninguna propuesta para demoler casas o reemplazar <laughs> nada. Entonces, me gustaría, nos gustaría tener esa información. So, what I'm saying is that, you know, we'd like to, of course, have his contact information to find out who exactly, um, what was that meeting about, to, um, because we don't have any particular information about proposals to demolish homes. Uh, and so muchos like uh, vecinos americanos blancos dijeron de que necesitaban que nuestros senadores fueran a, a decirnos eso. And uh, many of, their of his neighbors uh, were saying, like, they gathered together and said that they needed their senators to come and tell them that they would have to sell their houses. Mm. Sí, no, nosotros no estamos al tanto de esa propuesta, pero con mucho gusto podemos investigar. Entonces, más adelante lo que podemos hacer es que tomamos su información e investigamos a ver de qué se trataba Gracias eso. Gracias por okay? la invitación. <laughs> Thank you. Por supuesto for que sí. Que no sea la primera ni la última. No, las puertas están abiertas siempre. Okay, gracias. thank you. Gracias. So we, I said that we would, um, of course, take his contact information and get to the bottom of what exactly was that proposal that he was referring to. Juan González Cárdenas. Uh, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Juan González Cárdenas. Uh, vivo en la uh, 4100 Samson Road, Silver Spring. Uh, muy buenas noches. Uh, Durante, me moví a esta dirección en el año 1995 y vivo hasta la fecha, tengo alrededor de 33 años. Durante dos años, muchas, muchos miembros de la comunidad latina en el área, pero ahora se, se, se ha notado una gran, un gran porcentaje de latinos que usan el transporte público para trasladarse a sus trabajos y regresar a sus casas tal como en el caso de mi hermano Oscar Omar Rivas, con la única diferencia que mi hermano salió de casa para comprar su tarjeta del bus Ride Home 
y nunca regresó. El departamento de policía tocó en la puerta el pasado mes de junio del año del el pasado mes de junio del año 18 de 1918 para decirme que mi hermano había muerto atropellado a unos cuantos bloques o metros de mi hogar en la intersección de la Bill Mill Road y la Randall Avenue y la Connecticut Avenue. Omar tenía 55 años y dejó huérfanos a dos hijos. Yo me quedé sin mi hermano y el culpable sigue disfrutando de libertad hasta el día de hoy. Autoridades hoy no han podido determinar quién atropelló a mi hermano ni cómo sucedieron las cosas. El lugar en donde yacía su cuerpo es una zona muy pobre de iluminación y alto tráfico vehicular. El cruce de personas es increíblemente, a pesar de lo grande que es esa intersección, tampoco hay cámaras que registren lo que ahí sucedió. Por lo que, más allá de pedirles, les exijo que acondicionen estas calles de tal manera que sea segura para los peatones y conductores, sobre todo aquel, aquellos que, que implementen cámaras para que registren cada movimiento para responsabilidad a conductores irresponsables. Mi hermano jamás va a regresar a casa, pero espero que su muerte no quede impune y que sirva para generar cambios en mi comunidad. Es necesario que dejen de contar cada centavo que ahorran y empiecen a contar las vidas perdidas. Por favor, establezcan mejores cruces peatonales, construyan puentes para fácil acceso a quienes usan principalmente el transporte público. Invierten en iluminación a lo largo de este corredor y pongan cámaras de seguridad y de velocidad. En las calles aledañas, y hay otra cosa, en las calles aledañas, la Bears Mill Road, faltan señales, señalizaciones e iluminación. Es necesario que hayan más agentes policiales que supervisen a conductores y que aseguren que cumplan con las leyes de tránsito. Necesitamos que las señales de tráfico estén visibles y no escondidas. Señor Gracias. Carlos, eh. Muchas gracias por venir esta noche. Nuestro más sentido pésame por su pérdida y vamos a tomar muy en serio todo lo que está incluido en este plan para aliviar y mejorar estas condiciones. No se preocupe. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí esta noche. Good evening. My name is Juan González Cárdenas and I live in Sampson Road in Silver Spring since 1999. When I first moved here, there were not many members of the Latino community in the area, but now there are. A large percentage of those Latino residents use public transportation to go to their jobs and come back home, as, is in the case, as it was in the case of my brother, Oscar Omar Rivas. With the only difference that my brother left home to buy his ride on card and never came back. A police officer knocked on my door last June to tell me that my brother was killed at the intersection of Beers Mill Road and Connecticut Avenue. Omar was 55 years old Now, his two children have no father and I'm left without my brother. Whoever killed him continues to enjoy his or her freedom. To this day, authority, authorities have not been able to der, that, that are, that are mine, der, determine okay, okay. <laughs> um, who killed my brother or who, who or, or how it happened. The place where his body was found is an area without lighting in high vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Incredibly, there are no cameras that could record what happened there. So beyond asking, I am demanding an improvement to, on this street so that, that is safe for pedestrians and drivers. It is imperative that recording cameras be installed so they can record every incident to hold res irresponsible drivers accountable. My brother is never coming back home, but I hope that his death will not go unpunished and that it will help to generate changes in my community. You need to stop counting every cent you save and start counting lost lives. Please establish better pedestrian crossing areas 
build bridges for easy access for those who use public transportation, invest in lining along, the, along this corridor, and put security and speed cameras. Signs and lights are missing in the surrounding streets, surrounding streets of Beers Mill Road, and there is a need for more police officers to sup supervise drivers and ensure that they comply with traffic laws. We need traffic signals to be visible and not hidden. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias, señor Cárdenas. María Ruiz. Buenas noches a todos. Mi nombre es María Ruiz. Gracias por la invitación. Ay, disculpen, ando un poco mala de salud. Voy a poner a mi hijo que dé mi testimonio que había preparado. Pero les agradezco muchísimo y vivo ya por más de 30 años sobre la vía sin error. Her, her name is Maria, and she's, she's not feeling good. Of, um, she's, she's sick, so she asked her uh, son to read her testimony for her. All right. <coughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Good evening. Um, my name is Maria Ruiz. I lived on Viersme Road for more than 30 years. My neighborhood has changed a lot since we bought the house. Before, it was an ideal place to start a family and have a quiet life. Development has increased not only the number of residents, but also the vehicular traffic. Unfortunately, the infrastructure area remains the same as it was 30 years ago. Beersmill Road has a high volume of vehicular traffic, but little accessibility for those who do not have cars. It worries me to see every time I drive how people cross the middle of the street to catch the public transportation and risk their lives. The problem is that impru imprudence um, of those people can also affect my life and those of my family. It is necessary for the county to update the conditions on the street so that all of us who use who use it are safe. For that reason, I would like to ask to make a pedestrian bridge or more crossroads at the intersection of Broadwood Drive and Viersmill Road. This corner is very busy and dangerous. I also would like to ask you to put more lighting along the, st the street so we can see people when they're crossing at night. I would like to ask you to increase the police surveillance Cars are parked on the street are being vandalized at night. A greater police presence would help a, a lot to prevent this from happening. Finally, I think it is important to put a, a physical barrier between the, st the street and the houses. It is important that we are safe in our homes and that no drunk driver will crash into our ho house, creating a safe Environment must be the main reason for this plan. I'm asking you to approve it, to start making changes as soon as possible. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias, señora María Ruiz, que se mejore. Okay, so now to group C, Noemi Benitez, Stephen Chavers, C. Robert Don Rimple, Randall Lutenberg, Tina Slater, Carolyn Gupta. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Noemi Benítez, vivo en el 12304 de la Vera Smil por 31 años. Quiero dar mi opinión acerca del plan de mejora de la calle Vera Smil. Yo no estoy en contra de que se construyan puentes, siempre y cuando no afecten a nadie y no obliguen a ningún residente a vender su casa. No creo que un puente peatonal ayudaría mucho, porque los peatones realmente no lo usan. Creo que en, que en su lugar debería designar más cruz peatonales y que se implementen leyes que sancionen a peatones que estén haciendo uso de sus teléfonos celulares mientras estén en las vías públicas. También es sumamente importante que oficiales de la policía patrullen constantemente las calles que van en una sola dirección, 
porque son muchos los conductores que no respetan las leyes de tránsito y se van en contra, en contra poniendo en riesgo la seguridad de otros conductores y de los residentes. Yo entiendo que este plan de mejora se enfoca en ciertas áreas del corredor de la Veras Mill, pero creo que es importante un plan integral que involucre en otros aspectos del bienestar social de esta comunidad. Me gustaría que incrementen la vigilancia en zonas públicas y principalmente en los parques. Autoridades deben asegurarse que las leyes con respecto a tirar la basura en exteriores sean respaldadas, sean respetadas. Perdón. Necesitamos más señalización en varios idiomas que indiquen las normas y se, se sancionen que implican en el área. Es necesario que incrementen el número de cestos de basura en zonas públicas. También por cuestiones de higiene, me gustaría que el camión, el corredor de la basura, pase por lo menos dos días a la semana. Actualmente solo pasa un día y la basura acumula áreas, atrae, perdón, atrae ratas y representa un peligro para nuestro bienestar. Por otro lado, creo que las escuelas públicas deberían de hacer un e esfuerzo extra para que los padres de familia entiendan la importancia de involucrar en la educación de, de sus hijos. Padres deberían de estar enfocados en el crecimiento intelectual de sus hijos y asistir a las reuniones y actividades escolares de los niños para, que, para incentivarlos, incentivarlos. También creo que deberían de aprobar un una ley en la que se establezcan una edad específica en la que los padres puedan comprarle un celular a sus hijos. Es una manera de asegurar que nuestros niños sean activos, disfruten su infancia y estudien. Y por último, deseo de todo corazón que se vuelvan a implementar las oraciones en las escuelas, porque la oración trae mucha protección y esa es la mejor solución para poner un alto a los tiroteos y a las delincuencias. Necesitamos cambios. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, señora. Sí. Sí. Working. Good evening. I am Noemi Benitez, and I would like to share my opinion about the Pierce Mill Corridor Master Plan. I am not against building bridges, as long as no one is affected and no residents are forced to sell their houses. I do not think that pedestrian, pedestrian bridges will help much, Uh, because pedestrians do not you really use them. I believe that more pedestrian crossing areas should be designated instead. I believe that the county needs to enact laws that sanction pedestrians who are using their cell phones while on public roads. Also, it is extremely important that police officers constantly patrol our one-way streets because there are many drivers who do not respect traffic laws and go in the opposite direction endangering the safety of other drivers and residents. I understand that this improvement plan, plan focus, uh, focuses on certain areas of the Beers Mill um, corridor, but I think that a comprehensive plan that involves other aspects of social welfare in this community is also important. I would like, to, I would like you to increase surveillance in public areas and mainly in parks. Authorities should make sure that the laws regarding throwing garbage outdoors are respected. We need more signs in several languages that indicate the rules and sanctions that apply in the area. It is necessary to increase the number of garbage bins in our streets. Also, for health, health concerns issues, for health concerns issues, I would like to, um, I would like you to, I would like the increase of garbage truck to pet, I would like the garbage truck to pass at least two days a week. It currently passes one day a week, resulting, I think it's the microphone there, not its battery. Um, it currently passes two days a week. Res no, it currently passes one day a week, resulting in a lot of accumulation of garbage that attracts rats and represents danger, danger to our well-being. On the other hand, I believe that public schools should make an extra effort to, uh, so that parents understand the importance of getting involved in the education of their children. Parents should be focused on the intellectual growth of their children and attend, 
and attend meetings and school activities of children to encourage them. I also think that they should that they should approve a, the you, you should a, you should enact a law that establishes a specific age in which parents can buy a cell phone to their children. It is a way to ensure that our children are active and enjoy their childhood and study. And finally, I wish with all my heart that prayer be reinstated in schools because prayer brings a lot of protection to our children and communities. This is the best solution to stop shootings and crime. We need changes. Thank you. Stephen Chabers? No? C. Robert Darwimple. Good evening. Uh, I'm Bob Dalrymple. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Linos and Blocker. Uh, I'm here this evening on behalf of Halpine Park LLC, which is a group of individuals who have owned the Halpine View Apartments um, for uh, several decades now. Uh, Halpine View Apartments is on uh, 37 acres. Um, it's improved with uh, 560 or so uh, garden style apartments. Uh, and over the last 60 years or so, it's been a very successful uh, rental community uh, in, in this part of uh, Montgomery County. I would just note, uh, as a personal matter, I was born and raised in this area, so I have a, a strong vested interest in it as well. Uh, notice I didn't say I grew up in this area, because many would say I haven't grown up yet. But, um, <laughs> While the you know, property has served the community well for the last several decades, uh, the reality is that over the life of this master plan, um, there are some redevelopment changes that are going to need to be made to the property. And we were challenged by the uh, planning board during uh, the planning board's deliberations on the plan to work with staff to arrive upon a redevelopment strategy that would address uh, especially the affordable housing uh, uh, issues in this area. Uh, and at page 100 of the draft plan, you'll see a summary of the results of that. And uh, so we are in support of the draft plan uh, and the strategies that uh, have evolved uh, so far. And we look forward to working with you uh, as we move forward. I want to spend the rest of my time focusing on one issue that uh, is not yet covered, uh, at least to our satisfaction, in the plan. And in your letter, you'll see that there's a blue strip of land that goes through the middle of the Halpine View Apartments, and that was uh, a strip of land that was uh, deeded by the owners of this property at no consideration back in the 1960s for Aspen Hill Road Extended, uh, which is not going to happen. Uh, Aspen Hill would have to go through the cemetery and the park, and everybody agrees that there's just no uh, possibility for that. So we'd like the property returned and redeveloped as part of this property, uh, and in return we're offering uh, to provide 30% uh, uh, MPDUs off of the density that would come from this right-of-way. So it was provided 60 years ago at no cost. We'd like it back now, but uh, we, we'd like to contribute uh, some additional affordable housing, which I think is consistent, consistent with the disposition uh, goals of the county. Uh, so we are asking that the master plan specifically uh, suggest that this property be uh, return to private use and redeveloped in conjunction with the redevelopment of Halpine View, uh, and that the uh, that it also captures the uh, the offer for the affordable housing. Uh, again, this is all put in in the letter. Uh, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so um, much. Uh, your time is up, and yep. we will consider your written testimony. Well, good thing I'm not taking up Thank any more of your time then. Thank right? you, <laughs> Randall Luttenberg. Good evening, Madam President and members of the Council. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. My name is Randall Luttenberg, and I'm speaking to you tonight as a board member of the Rock Creek Palisades Citizens Association. Uh, we represent 1,700 homes in District 4, right along Veers Mill Road, uh, south of the road on both sides of Newport Mill Road, and um, the area defined by the triangle of Veers Mill University and Connecticut. Um, we have three schools in our boundaries, Rockview Elementary School and Newport Mill Middle School and Einstein High School. Um, our neighborhood is defined by these straight, three state highways and we hope that this master plan will soon be followed by a comprehensive review of the interaction of all of these corridors because um, there's several issues that we need to be addressed there. But I'm here tonight to testify in support of the draft plan proposal sections 2.5 
transportation and 2.7, environment. These sections encompass the kind of changes that will have the greatest impact for good or ill on the future of our community and the surrounding areas. And we urge you not only to adopt these parts of the master plan, but to consider these specific proposals for safe pedestrian and bicycle access to and along Veers Mill Road, traffic calming and attention to effective tree comfort, uh, cover and storm management as necessary and essential to the health of our community and the prosperity and well-being of our neighbors. Our neighbors are dying in pedestrian accidents. We support the goals of the Vision Zero Initiative and our neighborhood association participates in the No More Dead Pedestrians uh, Coalition. And we believe that these changes can transform this road from a dangerous barrier that separates neighbors into an important link uh, for our community to the rest of the world. I have two sons, ages 12 and 14, and I want them to live like I did at their age, exploring their world and traveling as far as they can on their bicycles and, 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 and looking around and visiting their friends and not relying on me for their transportation. Uh, but our local road network discourages this. And to illustrate that, we live a mile from the intersection of university Boulevard and Veers Mill Road, but it might as well be five or ten miles because there is no safe and practical way for us to walk or bicycle to the Wheaton Business District, an area that includes shops and grocery stores and wonderful restaurants and a movie theater and a shopping mall and all of these businesses that we would patronize if we only could. But once we get in our car, there's no incentive to stay in the local area, so there's no advantage to the local businesses. My concern and our concern is the opportunities for independent living and exploration that are lost to our children and our elderly and anyone without access to a car because of the design of these roads. Furthermore, when you add the economic effects that, econo that access to transportation and transit um, has, it, measures, it contributes measurably to the economic well-being of our area. And I would also point out that an important aspect of affordable housing is connecting houses to employment. It is imperative that the same standards that the plan applies to Veers Mill Road also apply to the intersecting roads. So we urge that if the Montgomery, uh, you know, if the Montgomery East Parkway extension proceeds, be modified to the standards of this plan, as well as Connecticut Avenue. There's many issues between Denfield mm -hmm. and uh, Veers you. Mill Road that are also um, just yes. as dangerous, and there's no sidewalk. Thank you, Mr. Luttenberg. Well. We will consider the rest of your written testimony. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Tina Slater. Good evening, I'm Tina Slater, Transportation Chair of Montgomery County Sierra Club, and I'm standing in for Dave Sears, who's traveling, he's our chair. Overall, we're pleased and impressed with the current draft of this important plan. Sierra Club's starting point uh, when we review plans is how will this plan help address climate change, which is the number one environmental issue facing our community and planet. In Montgomery County, one important way to address climate change is to work hard to give residents and workers more and better opportunities to get to where they need and want to go without getting in a car and driving. This plan is consistent with that approach. The stated transportation goals are commendable, a safe, efficient, and comfortable complete street that serves pedestrians, bicyclists, transit users, and motorists. We applaud the focus on improving pedestrian and bike infrastructure, which is critical as we've heard tonight. We urge the council to bring BRT to Veers Mill Road as quickly as possible and to be sure that BRT includes a dedicated lane because without that, the R for rapid is kind of false advertising. A truly rapid BRT is the core of the plan and without it, the rest of the plan falls apart. We know that this corridor is a state highway and thus SHA will need to be a willing partner in several aspects of the plan. Please let Sierra Club know where you think we might be helpful in urging SHA to do the right things to ensure the plan's success. A second important way that the plan can address climate change is to take full advantage of transit stations as locations for mixed use, mixed income attractive high density neighborhoods but uh, we think the plan may be a little timid. Don't get us wrong, we're not suggesting Bethesda level densities at Fierce Mill and Randolph, but we would like the county to take full advantage of the investment in BRT by providing many more BRT customers who can easily walk to these stations. Um, higher density neighborhoods at each of the six BRT stations will also make great locations for affordable housing, MPDUs, um, ADUs and other units enabling many lower income families to have access to very first rate transit. 
Speaking of housing, we applaud the plan's emphasis on preservation of existing market rate housing. This is a good plan. We think it could be made even better with a push for higher density neighborhoods within walking distance of the six BRT stations and a truly rapid BRT is the core of the plan. Let's see if we can get that designed and in place ASAP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Carolyn Gupta. Okay, there she comes. Good, e Good evening. My name is Carolyn Gupta. I'm with the Connecticut Avenue State Civic Association. We consist of over 1,000 homes bordering Randolph Road, Connecticut Avenue, Claridge Road, a portion of Henderson Avenue, and Beers Mill Road. Also present here is Ms. Joyce Thomas, who's president of the Montclair Manor Homeowners Association. Her community consists of 64 townhouses located on Claridge Court and Beers Mill Road. Uh, both communities consist of a d diverse, moderate working class. Many of the residents utilize the metro and ride on bus services as well as traveling on Veers Mill Road frequently. The projected plan for Veers Mill Road is for an increase in transit ridership with the bus rapid transit and for beautification along Veers Mill Road, such as planting street trees and placing public art at the BRT shelters. These suggestions are helpful. However, there are sufficient bus shelters on Veers Mill Road and building BRT shelters would affect people's, uh, would affect neighbors' homes that are located on Veers Mill Road. Also, the State Highway Administration is not providing enough maintenance of the existing bus shelters. For example, over the years, on snow days, even this last month, bus shelters are shoveled, but the sh sidewalks leading to the bus shelters on MD-586 between Connecticut Avenue and Claridge Road were not. Thus, it is a dangerous safety hazard. There are rampant violations of those placing unauthorized business cards, flyers, and ads. These taped ads and eyesore free newspaper stands are defacing the bus shelters. We agree that the good aesthetics are pleasing to the eye, but our communities are constantly reminding the State Highway Administration to mow the lawn, trim the overhead tree branches to make visibility for motorists, weed whack and pick up the trash and yard debris on Veersby Road between Claridge and Connecticut Avenue. What's the point of adding new features if the existing enhancements are not maintained properly? The idea of taking away one lane going east, one lane going west on Beers Mill Road lends this approach to traffic congestion, which breaks down the smooth flow of traffic. Thinking that having a BRT would increase transit ridership may be a good idea, but those who are using their own vehicles in our neighborhoods are using them not only to go to work, but to take their babies to daycare and their children to school, or they're going to and from doctor's appointments. In our neighborhood, the Beers Mill Road has the Q1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and the C4 Metro buses, as well as the Rhino buses, number 33, 34, 38, and 48. Beersman Road is mostly residential. It would be more feasible to have BRTs on such state roads as Georgia Avenue, which has four metro stations, as well as two hospitals. Georgia Avenue has many more commercial shops than Beersman Road. I can also testify the Y buses on Georgia Avenue, especially during rush hour, could be standing room going north or south. On page 28 of the MC and PPC's April booklet, it focuses on Vision Zero. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Is that time Thank up? So yes, that's okay. time up. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank we'll read the rest of me. your testimony. Thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, Council Member Rice, I think, had a comment? No? Oh. Okay. We just... Oh, okay. So, Council Member... Yeah, Council Member Rice wanted to know if there was somebody from ASHA present tonight. Is there somebody here from State Highway? Mm, doesn't look like it. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that I think is just incredibly important, Madam President, is that with a lot of these being our uh, state highways that are gonna be instrumental in terms of us really creating the change uh, that you're talking about, including some of the maintenance, uh, I know that our staff is gonna be reporting. Um, we in my district have been actively reporting every single month issues that we hear from the community uh, to SHA and ask them for follow-up and so I know that we're gonna be doing the same thing here in this instance. We need to have a better relationship uh, between State Highway and they need to be actively involved in terms of many of the maintenance issues that we've talked about beyond just the safety issues. And so I thank you for bringing up those issues about maintenance, because uh, those are incredibly important as well, uh, in addition to the 
uh, safety overhauls that we need to do to these roads as well. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank Madam you President. so much. And that's a constant work in progress, and uh, we continue to address that. So now we're on to Group D: Stephanie Rudman, Joseph Linnett, David Helms, Allison Gillespie, Peter Gray, Suzanne Casa. Ms. Rudman. Good evening, Council President Navarro and members of the Council. My name is Stephanie Rudman, and I'm testifying on behalf of Montgomery Housing Partnership, the largest nonprofit housing developer in Montgomery County. MHP is the developer of Halpine Hamlet Apartments, a community of 67 mainly affordable one and two bedroom apartments located just off Twinbrook Parkway. We support the Planning Board's recommendation to rezone our property. While we have no near-term plans to redevelop the property, several other market affordable housing communities north of ours in the Twin Twinbrook District may wish to demolish and redevelop sooner rather than later. A recent study released by the Planning Department provides new insights into what could happen if these properties are redeveloped. While redevelopment of existing multifamily buildings has been rare in the last 25 years, Demolition and redevelopment by market rate developers does tend to result in a loss of affordable housing units. When affordable housing developers such as MHP or HOC are involved and when the, and when the county has found county owned land, additional affordable housing units have been developed to offset what would otherwise be a reduction in affordable housing from redevelopment. By upzoning the garden style apartments for redevelopment, the affordability of rental housing in the Twinbrook Corridor will be lost if there is not a concerted effort to preserve or replace them. To this extent, to the extent that the sector plan is incentivizing redevelopment along this corridor, the plan should ensure a one-for-one -one replacement of the potential loss of market rate affordable housing. This can be done by the county aggressively seeking to identify county-owned sites where affordable housing can be located in this plan. For example, the plan contemplates the redevelopment of the Department of Recreation's administrative offices near the intersection of Veers Mill and Randolph Road once the department relocates to the county office building that's currently under construction in downtown Wheaton. However, under the design guidance, the plan recommends a site for attached single-family building types or stacked townhouses to transition to adjacent single-family neighborhoods. Any redevelopment of the property should be compatible with the existing neighborhood, but we would put forward the, that mid-rise multifamily construction is also appropriate for the site and can be configured such that it is in keeping with the surrounding neighborhood. We therefore request that the design guidance be amended to give equal consideration to multifamily housing. Another county-owned property which the council should target for affordable housing is the land surrounding this Holiday Park Senior Center. The plan recommends that the zoning remain at R60 or detached single family housing. We believe that the surface parking lots surrounding the senior center are a prime opportunity for housing, especially senior housing, given its immediate adjacency to this senior center. Notwithstanding the fact that solar canopies were constructed on the parking lot two years ago, the county could accomplish both its housing and sustainability goals by utilizing surface parking lots for housing. Thank you, Thank you so much, Ms. With Rubin. solar on the rooftop. We will read the rest of your testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much for those suggestions. Joseph Linnett. Good evening. Uh, I'm Joe Linnett. Uh, I am a member of Bullis Track LLC, a family-owned uh, entity trading as Rock Creek Woods Department, uh, uh, which is a number of families that have built and owned this property consistently since 1960, 1966. Uh, Rock Creek Woods is a 270-unit garden apartment project at the northern gateway of the Veers Mill Corridor. I appear tonight to voice our support for the recommendation of the Montgomery County Planning Board to rezone our property to CRT with an FAR 1.25. Rock Creek Woods is located on two parcels with a little more than 12 acres on the southeast and southwest corners of Twinbrook Parkway and Veers Mill Road. The property is immediately adjacent to the proposed BRT uh, station in the Twinbrook area, uh, and it, the southern portion of our property is within three quarters of a mile of the uh, Twinbrook Metro Station. The project consists of nine garden apartment projects, garden apartment buildings constructed in the mid 1960s. The land is encumbered uh, with the two twin brooks that Twinbrook Parkway is uh, named after. These uh, twin brooks run uh, in box culverts underneath the project bisecting it, which presents a number of challenges for our project here. 
Um, and the eastern portion of our property has a very difficult to, and sharply rolling terrain. The apartment buildings and mechanical systems at this 60-year-old project are now nearing the end of their useful life. And the apartment units themselves are approaching the point of functional obsolescence. The, the supporting utility infra infrastructure of the project, most notably is aging water and sewer lines, are a frequent source of service interruptions. Despite substantial capital uh, expenditures for the, in recent years, the entirety of the project's water and sewer lines are now in, in need of replacement. Although the project's been well maintained, it is lacking in modern market necessities and amenities. Among other matters, the, pro the project lacks ADA accessibility, modern fire code protection, energy efficient construction, building security, stormwater management, and forest conservation protections. And because of the design and age of this 1960s project, the buildings and their apartment units cannot be practically or physically retrofitted to modern standards. In addition, because this project predates the MPDU laws, none of the 270 units are MPDUs. The recommendations of the Planning Board recognize that this project cannot be economically redeveloped as a multifamily project if the land is limited to its existing density. In the absence of redevelopment, this project, like others, uh, will gradually decline into obsolescence and disrepair, depriving residents of the ADA accessibility, MPDUs, fire code protections, and other modern amenities. In recognition of the project's physical constraints and its close proximity to public transportation. Thank you, Mr. Lena. Thank you so much. We will consider the rest of your written testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. David Helms. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Helms. Uh, I'm with the Potomac Peddlers, about 3,000 uh, folks in our, our bicycle club. They're, they're, we ride across Maryland, Virginia, DC. I uh, just want to recall what the council did a couple of years ago. Uh, who said this? Every time I drive past that crosswalk, my stomach tightens. It's dangerous. Yes, sir. Uh, it's extraordinarily dangerous, Councilmember Navarro. The crossing at Veers Mill and Turkey Branch Parkway is undeniable, undeniably dangerous, the entire, the entire council. That was a letter to the State Highway and MDOT. Why were you writing about that? Well, this is, I, I took this picture. I was just going through there. This happens a lot. It was like bumper cars you know, uh, at the crossing. This is, this is Biza S2. She was 19. She was crossing with her mother at uh, Parkland. She was killed as she got off the bus and crossed the road. She went to Blair. As I made these copies at Kinko's, the, the uh, staff that assisted me started crying because she, he knew her. She was from Ethiopia. This is Frank Towers. He lived in, in the neighborhood. Uh, he was 19 years old. He was crossing uh, on his bicycle, on his Christmas bicycle. Uh, he got three, three days before. Uh, he suffered and was killed by a multi-threat, which is the first traffic stopped, the others did not. The council started to engage at this point. I know Council Member Navarro certainly did. This is, this is Oscar Rosario. He's 31, he was from Columbia. He died in uh, July 17th, 2016. That's when the council went into high gear and really got uh, furious with, with the state. The state high was MDOT and wrote a series of, of uh, letters to the state and, and we made progress. And I think that your efforts have, have yielded results at the crossing and, and thank you for that. But we can't stop. You can't stop now. This, you know, we can't end it there just because we got a crossing signal. It's time to continue. The Veers Mill uh, corridor is, is a result, a direct result of what you voted on with Vision Zero and, and these deaths. So it's time to move forward and put, if you want to, if you want to talk about equity, if you want to talk about making these people whole, please support this plan. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And um, please know that as we um, were doing our tour yesterday, actually 
I know that one of the recommendations of the plan is to put a you know completely functional light there because even after so much advocacy to get that particular you know hawk signal we're still realizing that the compliance is very low we're going to be pushing that really hard uh, and i think that at least the latest meetings with sha you know there seems to be a renewed uh, spirit of wanting to collaborate um, and that has to be a very short-term thing that we do you know uh, immediately um, but really do appreciate you being here this evening um, reminding us uh, yes. I just want to thank you, David Helms, for the work you've done to promote safety in this quarter. There's many community advocates here tonight, and uh, none of this changes without you, you we, and you've been really leading this effort in so many ways, so I just want to thank you for that. Okay. Allison Gillespie. Good evening, members of council. I'm here tonight because this corridor is a big part of my family's life. I've read the Veers Mill Master Plan in detail and give it my enthusiastic support. Both of my kids are students at Albert Einstein High School on Newport Mill Road and ride school buses or walk along Veers Mill to catch a WMATA bus every day. They often walk or ride buses to visit friends after school or go hang out in Wheaton. And I really love Einstein High School, but I worry about my kids and their friends. Veers Mill was not designed to handle modern urban life. It's a huge river of speedy and irate drivers. One of the biggest problems is that anyone not in a car is literally marginalized and put in danger at the side of the road due to poor planning back in the 50s and 60s. Incorporating Vision Zero into Veers Mill makes so much sense and will serve to uplift and improve the life of our entire community. I love that the plan seeks to transform the highway into a place where humans aren't just dodging traffic or seen as an annoyance, but rather as an essential part of the road's function. I look for a future where bus riders, pedestrians, bicyclists, and cars can coexist in a safe and pleasant way, and I'm super excited about what's in the plan to make that a reality. There are currently so many places where sidewalks and crosswalks just don't exist in this corridor. There are long stretches where sad little trails have been carved into the grass by the feet of hundreds of people trying to safely make their way north or south along the shoulder on Beers Mill. When students from Einstein's track team run, they often must run along the roads mapped out in this plan. It makes me cringe to watch these young, healthy, energetic kids run so close to traffic. But they really should be able to do what, every, what kids do at so many other county schools effortlessly, and that is train to compete in the neighborhoods where they live. And there should be no reason why walking to school for any age involves intermingling with cars going 40 to 60 miles per hour. That's a recipe for death. The current design of the road encourages those speeds and bad behavior due to its shape and engineering. We can and should do better. More trees, more exercise, more isolation, or excuse me, less isolation due to enhanced connectedness. I'd love to see na this neighborhood continue to be relevant and desirable to young families and safe for families in future decades. MCPS has implemented many academic improvements at Einstein, and now it is one of the most popular choices for the Down County Consortia, a real popular school and a real success story. But visiting the school for the first time gives parents a real moment of pause. The road there is so apparently unsafe and outdated, you really have to take a leap of faith and believe that this place will give your kids a safe, modern education. I'm grateful for the time and attention that Planning Office put into this document. I hope you'll vote to approve, and I hope it will be quickly implemented. Thanks again for the chance to speak. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Peter Gray. It's a tough act to follow. Um, council President and members of the council, I'm Peter Gray, and I represent the Washington Area Bicyclist Association and it's 1,500 members and thousands of other supporters in Montgomery County. I want the council to know that WABA enthusiastically supports the proposed Veers Mill Master Plan and urges the council to approve the plan in its entirety. The plan before you is a significant step forward towards implementing the county's Vision Zero Plan, which will enable the county to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and se zero serious injuries due to crashes between cars and pedestrians and bicycles. Most importantly, this is the first master plan that places Vision Zero principles at its core and has specific recommendations that will act to re-engineer the busy state highway that Veers Mill is today into a road which will accommodate the needs of residents who bike or walk 
or take public transportation along this corridor. Making it safe to use alternatives to cars is key to reducing traffic fatalities and serious injuries. Specifically, the plan has recommendations like number 15 in the short-term recommendations, quote, improve the Matthew Henson Trail crossing by providing a protected crossing that eliminates conflicts and a direct crosswalk connection and additional pedestrian scale lighting. Kind of the thing that, that Dave uh, Helms is focusing on just recently. Another recommendation would improve, would develop, quote, an interim continuous bike network along Veers Mill Road and parallel streets to provide a connection between existing transit and community uses. That would clearly make it safer for bicyclists to travel through this corridor. The plan also calls for putting in more sidewalks, as people have mentioned, and better access to transit stops, helping pedestrians and users of mass transit to use the corridor safely. There's a recommendation number seven of reducing target speeds on Veers Mill that will change the outcomes of any future crash crashes to significantly reduce harm resulting from those. Vision Zero strives to eliminate the number of crashes overall and reduce harm from crashes. Council can take a huge step tonight towards remaking this corridor so that the epidemic level of deaths and serious injuries from crashes involving cars is eventually reduced to zero. We salute the hard work that the planning staff has done over the last couple of years and affirm that we hope you will affirm the value of that work by approving this master plan. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. Gray. Suzanne Casa. Hello, I'm adding just another voice to the very overwhelming support here, it seems, for the master plan. I've been a resident in the Viersmere Corridor for about six years now, and I have watched the same safety issues that others have already mentioned in very poignant detail. Uh, it's not safe to walk along the road. It's not, well, I wouldn't even consider riding along the road on a bike. Um, but you do have to walk along the road sometimes, especially if you want to access public transportation, use the metro. There are bike racks at the metro, which I can't imagine how you would get there on a bike. Um, I would like to do so, and this plan would make that happen. So I just you know, wanted to add another voice to all the support for this plan. I also wanted to voice appreciation for the way that the plan was designed. It was a lot of public input. I went to many of the meetings that gathered the input. You could tell that people were very responsive to what we were saying, especially about the safety concerns, and that's obviously been incorporated into the plan. So thank you all, and thank you for those who actually worked on developing that plan. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, with that, we're going to move on to Group E. We have Gregory Campbell, Heidi Coleman, Christy Daphnis, Karen Grisez, Jennifer Broom, and Dan Thompson. Mr. Campbell. Uh, good evening. My name is Greg Campbell, and I'm speaking on behalf of uh, two adjacent properties owned by my family at 12607 and 12615 Veers Mill Road, uh, just north of Robindale Drive and adjacent to St. Jude's Church. Um, I'm here before you to request a zoning change to CRN 1.5, C 0.0, R 1.5, and H 45 at these properties, which collectively comprise just over two acres. Uh, the corridor plan otherwise proposes to maintain the current R60 zoning for now and um, modestly increased height and density under this CRN zone will support tasteful townhouse neighborhood and appropriate area of Veers Mill Road next to an institutional church and across from multifamily complex. Uh, the townhouses would provide the diverse missing middle housing types and ensure appropriate transitions to existing residential scale as desired by the proposed plan. Um, this increase in density is particularly appropriate near the proposed bus rapid transit stop at uh, Robindale Drive right in front of the property. Uh, the properties have been in our family for over 100 years. Uh, my wife, Debbie, and I have raised our five kids there. Um, my mom was uh, born and raised there with her family. Um, I'll just skip through some of this. Um, we never considered a zoning change, but my mom passed away um, last uh, June. Um, right before her uh, 90th birthday. Um, uh, my mom really welcomed the growth in the neighborhood uh, in the 60s as a transition from a family farm um, and was just lifelong friends with many of the new neighbors there. 
Um, she was surprised by a lot of the growth, but really enjoyed uh, raising family, and she would enjoy seeing uh, young families have a chance to buy a house and raise their families on the same land. Um, we would like to see, you know, a change in density, which would uh, make this possible for lower-income people. And uh, my wife and I recently, um, since the passing of my mother, are also considering uh, selling our property, which uh, the rezoning um, would allow for this redevelopment. Uh, we hope the planning board will agree in supporting this uh, CRN zoning and the county council the same, of course. Uh, it's consistent with the corridor plan's objectives and provides opportunity to fulfill the needs for housing diversity and reasonable density along the corridor. Townhouse proposal aligns perfectly with the BRT and the missing middle initiatives. Uh, my property, my mother's property, and the other uh, three adjoining properties, if that would be desired by their owners, are a perfect spot to increase density and introduce transitional housing types that are needed in the community without disturbing the residential feel of the single family neighborhoods. I request the rezoning on behalf of our two properties, but respectfully encourage the planning board and the county council to consider rezoning all five properties between St. Jude's Church and Robindale Drive to the same CRN zone at this time. Thank Do, you. Okay. Th thank, thank you, you so much, much Mr. Campbell. Sure. So sorry for your loss and really appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Heidi Coleman. Good evening. My name is Heidi Coleman. I've lived in Silver Spring since 1980. I serve as vice chair of the Montgomery County Pedestrian, Bicycle, and Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, and I volunteer with WABA. I recently retired following a 35-year career with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration at the U.S. Department of Transportation. I'm speaking in support of the Veers Mill Corridor Master Plan. As you know, in February 2016, the County Council adopted Vision Zero becoming the first county in the U.S. to do so. And in November 2017, the county issued a two-year Vision Zero plan with the goal of experiencing no annual traffic deaths in Montgomery County by 2030. Of course, adopting a two-year plan is only the first step. Montgomery County will not be able to eliminate traffic fatalities by 2030 simply by doing the same old thing or even by doing more of the same. And in fact, pedestrian deaths and injur serious injuries went up, not down this year. To achieve the ambitious goals that have been set, we need to make meaningful steps toward change. We must create a safe system. And this will require careful, thoughtful, well-informed planning. Adoption of the Veers Mill Corridor Master Plan is one such step. These documents, the document carefully examines the very real dangers that are present on Veers Mill Road Corridor and strategically and comprehensively examine opportunities to improve the infrastructure and, and environment along the segment to prevent further serious injuries and deaths from occurring in the future. Moreover, the, the document contains many critical, specific elements, including lowering speed limits, controlling speeds, improving pedestrian and bicycle crossings, improving the safety of bus stops, installing separated bike lanes, employing sophisticated signals and lighting, and more. The planning department should be commended for applying a Vision Zero approach to its work. The county council should, should approve the master plan. Moreover, Moreover, the plan should serve as a model for all transportation master plans that are developed in the future, and I hope it will be funded as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Christy Daphnis. Hello, I'm Christy Daphnis. Uh, I'm the chair of the Montgomery County Pedestrian, Bicycle, and Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, also a resident of Wheaton Hills, a neighborhood off of Veras Mill Road near the intersection of Veras Mill and Newport Mill. Um, the PBTSAC, as you all know, has taken a keen interest in the development of the Veers Mill Master Plan and strongly supports its adoption, particularly with regard to the roadway, transit, pedestrian, and bicycle features included in the plan. Uh, this position is consistent with previous communications and recommendations that the PBTSAC has had with the Council, which requested that you all um, 
designate the Veer's Mill corridor as a Vision Zero corridor officially. Um, we think that by doing that, it could raise awareness of Vision Zero and also provide an example and greater awareness of what Vision Zero would look like in practice. Um, in addition to the plan adoption, we're hoping that the council can also consider ways to accelerate its implementation. Um, as outlined in our August recommendation to y'all, which I've given you a copy of, um, and also as echoed by recommendations from local PTAs, the planning board, and other civic advocacy group, uh, there, there are areas along Veers Mill Road that need immediate attention to provide safe pedestrian and transit facilities for our children and for our residents. Uh, in future proceedings, we ask that the council consider taking action in the follow following areas. First, requesting a firm commitment from the State Highway Administration to authorize and fund certain improvements along Veers Mill. Specifically, this could include um, designation of relevant segments along Veers Mill Road as school zones um, and requisite interventions within those segments. Uh, for example, lowering speed limits and authorization of automated enforcement like speed cameras and red light cameras. Also, installation of a signal at the intersection of Veers Mill and Norris Drive, which is a, a well-worn path for our middle school and high school students going to Newport Mill and Einstein. Second, we ask that the council pursue and secure funding for targeted interventions along the corridor, namely a continuous sidewalk where no sidewalk exists now along the south side of Veersmill Road between Pendleton and Schoolhouse Circle. This area sits along one of the busiest bus routes in the state of Maryland. Uh, and to this end, we recommend the council consider offering amendments to the county's capital improvement program to fill any gaps for which the state funding is unavailable. Um, we appreciate the council's attention and partnership on important pedestrian, bike, and traffic safety issues across the county. We look forward to looking, working aside you um, in implementing this plan, particularly um, in considering that the communities around Veers Mill Road are disproportionately impacted by pedestrian safety issues um, and pedestrian and bicyclist deaths. Um, my children's elementary school is an elementary school with over 50% ESL, over 80% free and reduced meals. Um, it's a community that uses these buses, that needs these sidewalks, uh, and, and that deserves to have the attention and the funding and the implementation of these very important safety features. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Karen Grisez. Good evening, President Navarro and members of council. My name is Karen Grise, and I'm speaking tonight in support of the recommendation for the zoning change for the two properties at 12607 and 12615 Veers Mill Road between St. Jude's Church and Robindale Drive. And it was my brother Greg that's the owner of the 12615 piece, the uh, old farmhouse piece that I think you all saw on your tour yesterday or within recent days. I'm speaking on behalf of the trust that is the current owner of 12607, the red brick Cape Cod that my mother lived in from the time it was built until 1952 until her death um, about 18 months ago. I guess my remarks really come down to the theme of change in the neighborhood. Um, that, that property has been in the family since 1904 Originally, it was not only those two properties, but all the way back through the area that's now known as Wheaton Woods, almost back to Wheaton Woods Elementary School and to the south down to Turkey Branch, which you were hearing about earlier this evening. So when my mom was growing up on the property next door, there, were, uh, there was a barn and farm animals and an orchard next door and a chicken house. And even when I was a little girl, some of that was still there. The neighborhood changed and when she got her piece, when my mom got her piece and built her house in 52, they had a lot of the acreage to the back. Originally, that later that turned into a subdivision. That property had to change, the neighborhood changed around it. Nobody thought in our family about any kind of zoning change. Certainly my mother didn't either and she was perfectly happy living right where she was until the time of her death. It was really when she passed away and we needed to get an appraisal of the property to move on with disposition of the estate um, that we found out the property is no longer at all currently, no longer suitable for the current zoning. No, no farm, no chicken house, but still not appropriate um, for the t situation today. The appraiser said it was impossible to appraise the property. 
that there were no comps anywhere in the neighborhood, no potential purchaser would ever use it for a single family house. The driveway that we knew to be difficult for access to Veers Mill Road was classified as basically impossible and that the Rock Creek Terrace high rise across the street had changed the character of the neighborhood so much that it was really no longer appropriate for single family use. So that took us to the planning board, extensive work with Ms. McVario on the staff who's here tonight and other planning board members and a period of time trying to figure out what to do next. So this loss that was terrible for us turned out to be fortuitous, I think, from the county's perspective because it's leading at least this one and potentially more than one property to come on the market at the exact time when the county's looking to address um, the need for the missing middle and to make transportation changes in the area. So rather than the current R60, the modestly increased height and density under the CRN would allow for residential thank, development, thank more so appropriate much. for the neighborhood, Your thank you. Yeah. And we will let thank it serve families while yes. still meeting the needs of the county. Thank, thank you so much. Thank we'll you. take that into consideration. Okay, Jennifer Brun. Uh, thank you. Thanks for coming here for the meeting. It's nice. Um, I'm. Is, is I live. I'm sorry. Jennifer Broom. Yeah, Jennifer oh, sorry, was, was next. Was You're, you will be after Miss Broom. Yeah, I guess that wasn't Dan. So <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm, hmm. I'm not Dan. Um, <laughs> good evening. My name is Jennifer Broom, and I'm here as a resident of the town and country townhouse community off of Vares Mill Road uh, near Norris Drive, and as a member of the No More Dead Peds to advocate for prioritizing pedestrians and access to mass transit on the Bears Mill Road corridor. As someone who walks to and from the bus stop and the Wheaton Metro Station every day to go to work in downtown DC, I believe the corridor plan must prioritize the needs and safety of pedestrians above other transportation methods, uh, especially within walking distance of bus stops and the Metro Station. I urge the council, council to approve the corridor plan, but also not to wait for the full rollout of this corridor plan to make any number of simple, but effective and inexpensive improvements to increase pedestrian safety. These could include implementing no right turns on red, automatic cross lights, improved sidewalks, and more clear, clearly defined crosswalks, and perhaps most importantly, reducing speed on Veres Mill Road. These are all things that the, with the leadership of this council could be implemented with immediate effect. Additionally, this plan must also address safe pedestrian access to bus stops on both sides of Veres Mill Road. Currently, where the closest bus stops are to my home, there is no legal way for me to cross the street to get to or from the bus stop in my home. So every day I'm forced to take my life into my own hands and dart out and in traffic in, on Veres Mill Road just to get home. This, is, this can be a frightening experience, especially in the evenings on my way home in the dark. I would not do this if I had a legal way to, cross, to safely cross the street, but that does not currently exist. And I'm not the only resident who is in the same situation. Every day when I do this, there are other multiple people on the street with me uh, crossing this way uh, as well. Finally, one last note is that the actual implementation of this plan must be well managed down to the smallest detail because from the viewpoint of a pedestrian, it's the small things that matter. For example, when the sidewalks were recently repaired at University Boulevard and Veras Mill Road, as well as at Grand, Grand View and Veras Mill Road closer to the Wheaton Metro stop, the corner sections were, in, were intentionally left open for what I assume was grass, but their placement was exactly in the footpaths of normal pedestrian traffic. And as a result, instead of grass, they are simply mud pits. So you have to walk out into the street to walk around them. These are the details that are, after, that are often afterthoughts, but they are critically important at the pedestrian level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Dan Thompson. <laughs> okay. So I live in Wheaton Hills uh, since, uh, for 16 years. Uh, and uh, that would, for this plan, that would be from, from Galt to Newport Mill. And so I'm just thinking of that parochial interest. Um, I love the plan's vision for the parallel activities for pedestrians and bikes. Um, but the, the thing that will make this succeed is the crossings. It, otherwise, we do have a river that divides these communities. It divides Kensington from Wheaton if we can't get over to the fields behind Einstein. So I'm concerned about the crossing, the protected crossing recommended for, Newport, for Norris, right above Newport Mill, and at Galt. And as was said by a previous speaker, uh, high school and middle school students cross at Norris. And they 
are impatient. Uh, they take chances. They will wait for an opening and dart across the street. And they also have to navigate the fact that there are cars making left turns, cars making U-turns who've gotten gas up at Free State. It's a very dangerous place. I think the tendency is to put in a hawk or some, some less than a full traffic light. And I encourage you to go all the way at this intersection. You'll say, oh, it's so close to Newport Mill. Why? Well, you need it because at least a traffic light, the, the kids might wait. But if it's a hawk, they're not going to wait. They're just going to dart, dart across. Now, you're all from, now turning to Galt. It's a nightmare. And I'm sure you, anyone who's gone to get free state gas knows what that is like. And this is not something that should wait for the master plan to be put in place. It should have had a light there a long time ago. If you're coming out of Galt onto Veers Mill Road, you can't see the cars coming up Veers Mill. Because what this map doesn't show is there's a hill. The map is flat. But in reality, we have a big hill there. And you cannot see traffic coming up Veers Mill Road as you turn out onto it from Galt. And the same way, cars lined up at university are like starting at Indianapolis 500. They're ready to get out of Wheaton. They've been slowed down, and now they want to head to Rockville. And if you're down there at Newport Mill, they come down that hill and they're flying. So I think we need two lights, one at Galt and one at Norris. And it's, it's too long a stretch. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, now we're on to group F. And um, before we do that, Councilmember Jawando, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Uh, thank you, Council President. And I just wanted to, since you're still here, uh, thank uh, Mr. Campbell and Miss Greasy, if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, for, your, for your testimony, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you for the history that you provided. Um, we did visit those spots yesterday, or the day, day before the days are running together, but recently. And I also wanna commend you for your vision for understanding that we're all in a community and we wanna help each other here and we're transitioning and, a, and we're at a different place and you guys encapsulated Montgomery County <laughs> for the last 100 years from rural, suburban, urban and that whole transition and just commend you for being a participant with our planning staff and open to doing this. And I think it's a model, I think there's a lot of places in the county where we can look to do this where there's those types of homes that were formerly for a different era uh, and we can upgrade to not only help with housing, but also help with traffic and pedestrian safety. And so I just wanted to commend you for that and thank our planning staff for working with you. And thank you for everyone who's testified tonight, because this will probably be the only time I speak. So this was a great hearing. I hope you enjoyed it, us coming out to the community. Thank you. Great. Group F, Jason Fabritz, Sean Corbett, Brunilda and Marilis Lugo, the favorites, Joyce Thomas, Godofredo Chirinos, and Judy Tankersley. Mr. Fabritz. Good evening. My name is Jason Fabritz, and I live on Ilford Road, a property within the Connecticut Randolph District Plan Boundary. I would like to thank the Planning Department and Board for its efforts and outreach over the past two years in the development of this plan. There is much to be celebrated. However, given my time constraints, I must uh, highlight a few objectionable objections to the recommendations that will have a negative impact on my neighborhood. I wish to call out my objection to the sheer density of the rezoning proposed for the Connecticut Randolph District, and specifically the redevelopment of the recreation office's property to heights of 65 feet, a sizable win for a lucky developer. The plan calls for the concentration of development and intensity along major roads. In this case, that would be Randolph Road. This could result in a six-story building roughly 250 feet from my property. This is not something I would consider a thoughtful transition from a neighborhood of single-family detached homes. The transition is, is even more abrupt for homeowners along the uh, east side of Bushy Drive. These height limits should be lowered to facilitate a more reasonable transition towards, a towards the proposed higher density co commercial core. Furthermore, I ask the council to refrain from disposing of the property in the first place. Once that property is gone, it will be difficult to find additional property elsewhere for public uses such as parks, community centers, and our schools. I must point out that presently, the, an entire grade of students at the nearest grade, stu grade school, Sergeant Shriver Elementary, attend classes in portable trailers. How is infilling this property with hundreds of households going to ease that pain? This property should be in consideration for a public use, not for a developer's windfall. I realize the plan attempts to facilitate the missing middle housing in the corridor and the intent of developing this property would conceptually reach towards that objective. 
However, I must point out that the marketplace is already solving this issue, and unfortunately, in a way that is detrimental to the quality of life in our neighborhood. Too many single family structures on our street already house multiple households. As you can see from the photos taken Tuesday evening, this has led to overcrowding on our street with multiple cars parked across driveway entrances, sidewalks, and off the pavement ripping up yards. A six-story apartment or stacked townhomes two blocks away from this will not relieve this situation. Given the market pressures in the neighborhood, I believe that new development will quickly fill beyond its intended design capacity. And despite all development being adequately parked in a legal sense, additional vehicles will spill into our neighborhood and onto our streets. And there will be more children in temporary trailers. Learning. I also have some comments about the uh, transportation portion of the plan, but I'll leave them, in, leave them for writing for your consideration at your leisure. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Sean Corbett. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, provide input for the plan tonight and for doing this here. I didn't have to drive all the way down Beers Mill Road to Rockville. Uh, my name is Sean Corbett, and I'm the president of the Wheaton Hills Civic Association. Our neighborhood sits at the eastern end of the area covering the plan from Galt Avenue to Clare Ridge Road with a significant uh, part of our homes within the plan boundaries. The Veers Mill Master Plan, if approved, funded, and followed through on, represents smart, substantive uh, improvements to this major roadway and its uh, surrounding communities and environments. I want to highlight a couple specific uh, recommendations from the plan that uh, have a direct and tangible impact on our neighborhood. All in positive ways, uh, if Im implemented thoughtfully. Uh, a large number of students, as we've heard, uh, to Newport Mill Middle School and Einstein High School cross Veers Mill Road on a daily basis. Uh, too many do so at unmarked natural crossings where residential streets intersect Veers Mill. The plan calls for implementing a school speed zone, adding sidewalks, speed cameras, and placing in protected crossings at Norris Drive and Galt uh, Avenue. We fully support these measures, as well as the inclusion of a red light camera on Veers Mill at Newport Mill Road. This master plan's uh, commitment uh, to realizing Vision Zero is to be commended, as is its integration with the bicycle master plan. The plan touches on, and I'd like to reiterate the need for a comprehensive evaluation of stormwater management and rainwater capture along Veers Mill. Aging neighborhoods like ours have an inadequate number of drainage inlets and full implementation of the plan will likely add additional impervious uh, surface, increasing rose, uh, runoff to Joseph's, Joseph's Run, the environmentally compromised stream uh, that intersects our neighborhood and flows into the recently renovated uh, Wheaton Claridge Park. Lastly, I wanted to express my gratitude to the planning board for the level of uh, community outreach and engagement conducted throughout the uh, development process for this plan. Uh, when the Wheaton, Civic, uh, Wheaton Hill Civic Association asked the board to, to come to one of our commu uh, community meetings and talk about well, what they do, they framed it in terms of this plan leading to greater community engagement and interest, so kudos to the board for that. As a community bounded by three sides, on three sides by state highways, Georgia Avenue, University Boulevard, and Veers Mill Road, Wheaton Hills is particularly sensitive to the conditions and impacts of these thoroughfares. The vision expressed in the Veers Mill Master Plan as a complete street concept, purposefully designed and zoned to connect neighborhoods com and communities through improved pedestrian and bicycle uh, infrastructure and transit, is a model to be expanded upon countywide. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Brunilda Marilis, Lugo de Favorites. Hi, my name's Amaralus Lugo the Favorites. I am here to talk about, um, you guessed it, school stuff, because you always see me for school stuff, right? And new ones, hi, you'll get to know me. I do a lot of school stuff. Um, I used to be treasurer at Sergeant Trevor Elementary, and I'm currently delegate at Northwood High School. And I am here to talk about some of the ways that the changes proposed by the corridor plan will help to enhance inequities already present for our children in the Down County Consortium system. And think about the Down County Consortium. It has managed to become an effective educational network, and think network, for our children. It allows them to pursue academic interests ranging from bioengineering to the CAP program at Blair, to IB and visual arts at Einstein, to MC squared at Northwood. For this network to work, however, we need to navigate the transportation needs of our children to actually access these resources. The main connector for most of these schools is the Veres Mill Corridor, particularly for Northwood. We're looking at new Northwood being built and our students possibly being put at Woodward. Um, and the way they'll be getting back and forth from there is 
you guessed it, very small. Um, right now, that's a two and a half hour metro bus ride. Just check it out. It, it's really mind blowing how not to get there on metro. Um, so the main connector is Ferris Mill. Our homeschool is Sergeant Shriver, more than 800 children, 80% farms, and over 200 of them right now in portables. Um, a lot of us have children in multiple schools, and being able to drive to different places up and down the corridor is essential to access resources, spread among different schools, and keep our jobs and pay our rent. In the last few months, I have driven to Parkland Middle, Northwood High School, Blair High School, and Sherwood High School. All of these are within a 15 minute drive of our house, but require over an hour when using public transportation, except for Sherwood. That's, you gotta do two buses, and that one's more like an hour and a half. Um, so reducing speed and capacity will make it harder for our children, some of the neatest students in our county, to fully access the range of opportunities MCPS has worked so hard to offer them. Furthermore, I wonder at the wisdom of turning the county parks building in Randolph into high-rise apartments when MCPS is desperately kind of looking for more school space, and I just read it was a decommissioned school. Um, yeah. I cannot see adding more students, more portables, more obstacles for our students to access their educational and career opportunities. And last but not least, um, I've got a link to a cute, cool blog about um, planning equity in urban planning where they observe that if we do not incorporate issues of equity into public transit, we not only bake existing inequalities into the future structure of our cities and regions, we maximize rather than minimize damaging effects on our society. This plan seems to like one that has taken our neighborhood as an engineering problem with one ideal solution, and it's not. Um, it is assuming that there are transportation options that do not exist and will not exist, um, and thus cannot Fortunately, you cannot substitute for mom, carpool from one event to the other or as the main tools for academic achievement. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Joyce Thomas. Good afternoon, or oh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the council for inviting me to have an opportunity to present some concerns that, that I have. Basically, everyone has basically said almost the same thing in terms of safety, in terms of uh, lighting, uh, you know, traffic lights, et cetera, and the, the drivers who drive their cars the way they feel. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about um, I'm particularly concerned about the crosswalk at um, from Beers Mill Road near Center Hill and Andrews Street. Andrews and Center Hill are both one-way streets. Center Hill has a um, shelter on the east side of Beers Mill Road. There is no walkway from Center Hill to the opposite side of Beers Mill Road. So if someone is running down the hill from Center Hill on the, is it the north or the south side, going to catch the bus going toward the Westfield Shopping Center, they have to dash across the street. Uh, and it's very dangerous. Actually, it was only yesterday that I saw three teenagers just darting at the aisle of Andrew Street, uh, going toward the opposite side of Beers Mill to catch the bus. And it was like I had to hold my breath because I didn't know if the car was going to hit them or what. So I'm suggesting that there be a crosswalk placed at um, Center Hill, which goes directly across the street to the, um, the shelter. And perhaps not put a crosswalk at Andrews, uh, where there is also a tree and some concrete, which means that it would, be, it would cost to have that renovated to put a to put a crosswalk at that particular spot. Uh, 
I'd also like to mention that there is not a street sign at Center Hill. So if you're driving going toward Connecticut Avenue, there's no Center Hill sign. Many times I think accidents are caused because the drivers cannot see the street at night and they slow down and they get rear-ended many times. Uh, I'm happy to say also that for, and this has been several years now, but as a result of the traffic light that is now at Claridge Road and Beers Mill, uh, Delicate Car was quite instrumental in helping the association that I'm with, Montclair Manor Homeowners Association, the Connecticut Avenue Estates uh, Civic Thank Association. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. I'm gonna finished. Have to, yeah, you are finished. My goodness. We will take into consideration right. the rest of your testimony. Thank you so much for coming oh, yes. out tonight. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Godofredo Chirinos. Señora Presidenta, buenas noches. Miembros del Consejo, buenas noches. Eh, yo tengo que felicitarlos porque... Yo asisto desde el 2017 a estas reuniones, creo que estuve en cinco ocasiones y vengo a esta última donde ya se cristaliza y veo que esto ya es una realidad. Indudablemente que estamos ante un tema de salud pública que beneficia a la comunidad y esto tiene que estar de la mano con una educación para la salud. Council members, thank you for having me this evening. Um, I have been coming to these council meetings since the 1960s, and I have to say, um, no, for two years. He says he has been coming, uh, yeah, for two since 2017, and um, he says that it's, yeah, and he, um, sí la he visto, right. Yes. He was saying that um, he has to congratulate us because finally a lot of these issues are becoming a reality, and there's a need to address issues that affect health and public health. Bueno, les decía que el tema de educación para la salud es muy importante porque indudablemente hemos escuchado tantos casos de seguridad que esto no se vea factible si es que esta ciclovía, porque así va a ser, eh, se transforme en una eh, ciclovía totalmente segura con todas las eh, instancias que están solicitando las personas que han hablado. Um, he said that he has been heard, he, hearing a lot about um, uh, the plan, and uh, but now he is happy that he, he sees it. Please correct me, council member. But like he he um, he said, finally is narrowing narrowing down to the point in which um, he's actually going to see the cycle ciclovia. Okay, good. Uh, right. So uh, part of what he's saying is that um, he has now seen that we're getting to a point where we're addressing the issues of safe roads and addressing many treatments in order to achieve um, a lot of safer roads. Al poner en marcha este corredor, eh, sé que ustedes están buscando el bienestar de la persona y eso es muy saludable. Por consiguiente, eh, solamente ya para terminar, porque el tiempo nos ha ganado, eh, a este corredor que de lunes a sábado estaría funcionando eh, en el transporte público y en el transporte no motorizado, que es lo esencial que va a tener, eh, sería bueno que el fin de semana dado que cada vez son más escasas las, las, eh, eh, los campos, las, las acciones recreativas, eh, no porque no se tengan en cuenta, sino porque eh, no se ha hecho mucha infraestructura, se tenga una ciclovía recreativa, donde toda la familia salga en sus eh, vehículos no motorizados y tengan las cuatro millas a su disposición desde las 7 a 1 de la tarde, tal como se usa en otros países y yo creo que Montgomery tiene que estar al día en esto también. Gracias, ¿eh? muy buenas noches. Muchas gracias. So, uh, one of the recommendations that he's making um, has to do with the ability to dedicate certain lanes, maybe on the weekends, uh, for non motorized, uh, you know, use. So, whether it's bike lanes, etc., so the families can, uh, on the weekends, uh, enjoy uh, being able to utilize those, um, you know, dedicated lanes for that kind of use, and it's something that he says has been used in other countries, and he thinks that Montgomery County could be a really wonderful place um, to do so. Muchas gracias. Uh, Judy Tarnkinsley, I think I'm pronouncing that sort of correctly. Very close, Tarnkinsley, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to comment on the plan, and I know you're all happy to see me as the, the last person to speak, no matter what I say. Uh, just wanted to say that certainly 
I, along with every, many other people who have already spoken, we welcome the attention and the improvements to basic safety, basic sidewalks, crosswalks that are uh, contained in the plan. On the other hand, I have serious questions in my mind about the overall plan. I have some concerns about it based on the overall approach that appears to amend multiple master plans in significant ways through a subject-oriented approach, the corridor plan, the bicycle plan, the pedestrian plan, that leaves communities modified and changed in ways that preclude understanding the effects of those plans on the communities. How can local community needs be respected, recognized, and valued when an overall plan implemented over time dictates an approach that bakes in multiple requirements. I'm also struck by the repeated references to maintaining the nature of the area in the study as single family residences. Despite that mantra, this plan supports zoning changes to allow for higher density requirements along the corridor at proposed BRT stops, no less, and in commercial areas to allow for mixed housing use. It seems to me that older down county and mid county communities face many pressures from such nibbling away of zoning areas and the protections they provide. These suburban areas have provided affordable, varied neighborhoods for 60 or more years. They've changed with the changing demographics. They should not be downgraded by planning decisions that make them unattractive as long-term residence, residences or allow them to become problems when density adds to the issues that deteriorate the quality of life in those neighborhoods. I note that much of the discussion in the plan indicates that the bus rapid transit dri drives the need for much of the rezoning proposals. BRT is a project that sounds good, but on this corridor, already well served by transit, it appears to have limited usefulness. Again, one must ask if the needs of the adjacent residential neighborhoods were any part of the consideration, or are they only, a considered, only considered as a source of ridership in order to make BRT viable? I believe this corridor plan carries too many assumptions that are questionable now with too many serious implications for the neighborhoods surrounding Veers Mill Road to be acceptable as is without serious editing. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your testimony. Um, and so with that, we conclude our tonight's he uh, public hearing. I want to... Um, I want to thank uh, council staff that made this happen so quickly. I want to thank my office staff also for doing a lot of uh, work uh, to get us here. The planning staff uh, for all their extraordinary work uh, for this plan. Uh, I want to thank the planning board for uh, really, you know, going through this and sending us what I think it's it's a really incredible. Um, a product, and so Mr. Casey Anderson, Ms. Natalie Fanny Gonzalez, we're here representing uh, the planning board. Thank you, and also Holiday Park for hosting us tonight, and all of you for staying here until this uh, late hour. So um, that concludes our plan, and uh, our uh, Fed committee is going to start working very soon. So now it's on in their hands. Thank you so much. <laughs>